Hey guys, VBAT here with another VPlays, taking a look at another tier 10 fighter. This is going to be the MiG-15 BIS. Uh, the BIS actually means Bravo, I found out, like it's the B variant. Uh, BIS apparently is Latin for twice, and that's why it is the second. Uh, but this is an improvement on the single seat fighter variant of this airframe, and... It is a it's a fun plane and like I said before the I-250 the gun arrangement is pretty much what preps you for this airframe. You retain the same 23 millimeter cannons that you had with the MiG-9 and then when you get to this bad boy you get the same guns with the exception that your 37 has just a little bit more oomph to it. Uh, this is going to really lend itself to just bursting the rounds because you don't want to hold down the trigger too much unless you've really settled in on somebody but it is going to be one of the fastest fighters in the game. Spitfire not paying attention to us. He's in a bad energy state. There we go. Do have somebody coming in in an F-86. He can't outmaneuver me, but he can't outpace me. This is one of the reasons I wanted this aircraft, is I wanted to see these classic air-to-air -air battles between these two airframes. The F-86 was the first aircraft I wanted in this game at Tier 10, and the MiG-15 was the second. I am not going to be able to outturn this guy, but if I can get him into a situation where he straightens out at all, I might be able to outpace him. Let's go ahead and just gun it out of here. He's not in the same direction as me. We're dipping that nose. We're getting that speed up. 500, 600, 615, and we are getting departure from that airframe. We're going to let our boost build up just a little bit. We're going to do an up and over turn here. We're going to come back in and a head on. And we are able to put that fire out. Get a little bit more range on him. Let's see if we can get that nose back on. We hit him pretty good on that pass. He's definitely feeling it. We want to get a little bit more distance if we can. This is where the high speed of this airframe comes into play. Boost for the nose over. Got him, finally, and we captured the zone. That was a really tough fight. I'm glad we were able to eke out the win in that head-to-head, -head, but that's just it, right? This aircraft is going to have the edge in certain conditions and those conditions are going to be the speed department. So we're going to come back here. We're going to get a little bit of a repair going on. We'll come back around and get back into the fight. But like I said, this is going to be the high speed altitude fighter. Very iconic. It has these wing rakes, which were actually meant to keep air directed over the wings during high speed flight. Straighten out, straighten out. Nope, not going to straighten out. We'll break away. Okay, he doesn't want to play with us. Now he does few brushing passes on him. Doing a lot of boom and zoom runs right now, but it is effective. Want that 37 to do the work. Want to get our altitude, but we don't want to lose our speed. We definitely don't want this guy to get his guns on us, but that 37's doing his job, putting some serious damage on the control surfaces, and the 23's can give us that sustained damage. This F-84 is way outside of his altitude regime. He should be much lower. We're getting the burst out, letting those big guns make the contact. Does not have the momentum to maneuver. And we're able to take him out. 
Again, speaking of aircraft operating at altitudes they're not really supposed to, here's an F-84. There was the Bravo variant. There's an F-84F down there. Just get a brushing pass. Got it. And yeah, let's grab the repair. We're going to head back to the middle. See what we can do to help out. We're going to go for a vertical climb. Just to showcase how much acceleration this aircraft has. Getting up to about 500 miles an hour in the vertical. I'm going to level it off. Let it build up some more of that boost. That way we can maintain this momentum we've gained. There is a heavy fighter. There we go. We're not getting overly invested in a singular target. We will come back on him though. We don't want to give him a chance to get those 30s on us. This F-84 wants to play with us. He's going to have to play with us up here. We'll come back down on his aircraft. Our bots were able to get the other mining plant. That is going to be very advantageous for us. Okay, another F-84. This is Squall Line, so if we take this guy out, he's gone for good. Sweet. Doesn't need to be my kill, just needs to be a kill. As you can see, it's still a fairly maneuverable platform. It doesn't have the same type of range and sustained damage that you'd see in like a P-1101, but it definitely can carry its weight. FJ-1, please and thank you. Good. Akamatsu metal, that's good for us. Perfect. Again, sustained damage isn't spectacular, but it's definitely some damages there. The enemy is about to win. The F-84 thinks he's going to be able to get away. That isn't the case. Winged Legend. Perfect. I am not interested in these air defense aircraft. I want to kill these enemy aircraft since we are in squall line here we go we're about to win in about five seconds oh no I take that back I thought we were further along in the capture even this 262 we're able to close on him fairly effectively granted he is slowing down for a target but at 572 and we're able to sustain that fairly easily with this aircraft. Are you giving it to me? Okay, I'll take it. There's only one enemy aircraft left and he's all the way on the other side of the map. Not too worried about that. But definitely showcases the speed that this aircraft has and the type of damage you can get with that 37 once it makes that contact. It feels really crisp. 
Uh, this was a cold recording, actually. This is my first attempt at it, so not too bad of a result. Uh, we did get Wing Legend, we got the Akamatsu Medal for 400 capture points without dying, and the Kazuda for killing five enemy aircraft after Squall Line, and then of course Flying Guardian, or Guardian rather, is 250 capture points for destroying enemy aircraft over a sector. Let's go back to the hangar, see how we actually did for experience gains, and then we'll talk a little bit about that 37, because that's really what you're getting from this airframe. Everything else about the aircraft allows it to be able to kind of bump itself up from its previous tiers, so it remains competitive. Everything just kind of gets a little bit better across the board, but this one just looks way better than the MiG-9. Not that I didn't like the MiG-9. It's a great platform, but this is an aircraft I've always wanted. During the Korean War, the F-86 Sabre and the MiG-15 went up against one another on several occasions, and it was an absolute devastating fight between the two, like it was a head-to-head -head engagement, and some of the best uh, early stages of jet combat stories come from the clashes between these two giants of the jet propulsion era. And since this game kind of culminates during the early stages of the jet era, it really is two of the most iconic aircraft, I think, in the game when it comes to top tier play. Uh, after the game ended, of course, we get another bump, a thousand personal points for being a top player on your team. <clears throat> So we were able to outpace the enemy player and we managed to kill 15 aircraft uh, that almost, if we would have killed a couple more aircraft, I'm willing to bet you we could have skipped over that line. There it is, two more aircraft and we would have gotten a grade one, I believe. Yeah, I think we were pretty close. But... We did get 39,000 experience for the pilot because we are converting the crew experience. I actually remembered to click the button this time. Uh, I am still not fully kitted out in this aircraft. In fact, <laughs> this isn't even upgraded because I was waiting to get some cash to be able to buy the upgraded engine because the upgraded engine is really what I wanted. Go ahead and enhance that as well. But yeah, this is... Uh, pretty much my big nine pilot you can see that we've gone with the marksman one engine guru one aerodynamics expert and firefighter and once i get another skill point we'll get to mess around a little bit more and decide what we want to do with those extra two points uh, most likely i'm going to throw it in here for aerobatics expert but all in all i think the thing does just fine for its maneuverability a 10.6 turn time with the current setup is not bad it's actually going to be yeah we're going to apply that comparable to the 1101 at the same tier but you can see that the speed comparisons are going to be pretty drastic the airspeed on this platform 634 boost speed 683 for max dive which is going to severely trump the p1101 and if we take a look at my f86 saber with its pilot in the seat for once uh, this guy, while he is a very fast airframe, is still not going to be as fast as the MiG-15. So 621 and 683 versus 634 and 683. So the 634, that really does allow us to be able to get this aircraft fast enough. And with a very short range on the F-86's guns, we're able to get that separation we're looking for. I mentioned that this 37 millimeter is going to be different than the predecessor's weapons. So if we take a look at the MiG-9, the MiG-9's 20 or 37 millimeter gun is going to only be 290 damage per second with slightly less effective range, but you're going to be able to get 320 damage per second off of the top gun for the MiG-15 and the effective range gets a slight bump as well. All in all, I think that it's an absolutely fantastic fighter, and I definitely enjoy flying it so far, and there's something to be said for that oomph of that 37 millimeter. It really does quite a bit of the lion's share of the damage. I'm not a big fan of the harmonica gun system, but after I figured out how to set up my weapon groupings, it's nice to be able to get the sustained damage out of those 23s when you need it, and then use that 37 to be able to get those hard hits in in order to wipe the enemy off the face of the map. Uh, we do have the effective fire ranges really long for the 23s, so those are nice for when you're on those long tail chases and you just want to get a couple of rounds on target. 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.